Dungeon Quest is a brutally difficult tabletop dungeon crawling game for two to four players published by Games Workshop in 1987. It is essentially an English version of the game Drakborgen, published in Sweden two years prior. The game is very challenging, and it is not only possible, but likely, that none of the participating players will escape the dungeon alive. In 1987, Drakborgen 2 was released, and Games Workshop, being who they are, brought the game over to the English-speaking audiences as two separate expansions, Heroes of Dungeon Quest, which includes more cards and 12 unique heroes with their own abilities to be played, and Dungeon Quest Catacombs, which makes a pretty difficult board game even more ridiculously hard. In 2010, Fantasy Flight Games republished Dungeon Quest as part of the Runebound universe. This version of Dungeon Quest includes the Catacombs expansion by default, but unfortunately there is no accompanying heroes for Dungeon Quest. Today we are going to unbox the 1987 Games Workshop Dungeon Quest and take a look at everything it comes with. Right away, the box asserts the obstacle of the game, asking whether you dare face the Dragon's Challenge. And we are reminded that this game is brought to you by the makers of Talisman. The game does include full rules for solo play, and we will be playing this solo on this channel. It comes with everything you see here, and a bit of text in the back reads, the eerie ruins of Dragonfire Castle atop the sinister peak of Worm's Crag were abandoned long ago. Memories of the vile deeds of the wizard Tisseramen have faded like a half-remembered nightmare, but far beneath the castle's shattered stones, nameless horrors still prowl the gloomy dungeons while a terrifying shadow stirs in sleep. Let us open the box. On the side we get those lovely other Games Workshop games at the time. Just a great sort of period advertisement to let you know what else is out there including the addition of Talisman that was made popular at the time. We have our rule book. It's pretty extensive. Having read through this and having played the game a few times, I think the rule book is pretty well laid out. I would definitely advise that you go through the entire thing once or twice and try to understand the bulk of it before you play your first game. It will at least make it easier to look up certain rules once you are encountering the different mechanics of the game while playing. The contents of my box are a bit of a mess because I don't have any sort of organization in here. The game comes with monster cards, which essentially set up what the monsters that you encounter in Dragonfire Castle will end up doing once you find them. There's a lot of these, and they really give variety to the different ways that monsters react to you. It's pretty interesting because when you encounter a monster in Dragonfire Castle, and there are many, you can choose to attack them, wait and see, or escape. And once you've made your decision, depending on the monster that you have encountered, they may choose to do different things. Some of them will outright flee. Some of them will initiate combat. And if you attempt to escape, sometimes they'll attempt to slash you in the back as you're trying to get away. No two monsters will behave the same way, and that's what these cards are for. Dungeon Quest comes with a ton of these room tiles, and these are the tiles that you'll place down each turn as you adventure through the dungeon. Some of them have more than one way out, and you'll always step over this little white arrow. Sometimes that arrow's not white, and when it's not, you've drawn a special room card, and you'll follow the special instructions on the board or in the manual. Normally when you draw a room tile, you'll also draw an accompanying room card. These can range from being empty, which is extremely lucky for the adventurer, or provide you with monster encounters. Oh god, it's a champion of chaos. Still other cards are terrible, such as Torch goes out, forcing you to stay in the room that you've drawn until you can roll targeted numbers on your die to light your torch again and continue your adventure. Every once in a while, if you're lucky, you will find treasure, but more often than not, you'll find things trying to kill you. Here's a giant spider. Never mind the monsters, we also have traps, but moving on. Every once in a while during your adventures, you'll come across a dead adventurer, and you get to choose whether or not you'd like to search the corpse. Pretty grim, but this is the nature of Dungeon Quest. Searching these adventurers can net you treasure beyond your wildest dreams or nothing. Or potions, which are handled very strangely in this game. Potions can provide you with healing effects, or they can outright kill you in a single turn, and you've got to roll a dice to figure out which of these it's going to do. Just in case you thought searching dead adventurers was harmless, here's a scorpion here to do a d6 damage minus two to you. Instead of moving from room to room, you can also search the rooms that you're in and draw from the search deck. 
If you're lucky, the room you're in will be empty. Uh, I mean, you'll find a secret door. If you're really lucky, you'll actually find treasure. And if you're really lucky, oh, it's a giant centipede. Damage D12. Here's the crypt deck that also comes with the game, just in case you encounter a tomb in the dungeon. As with the other decks, it's possible for you to find treasure, nothing at all, traps, or skeletons, which may or may not come to life. And finally, there are door cards, because it's possible to draw a tile that has a closed door. When you encounter a door, you may choose to try to open it, and that's when you'll draw from this deck. Sometimes the door just opens. Sometimes it's jammed shut, forcing you to take another turn to try to open it if you want later. And wouldn't you know it, some of the doors are trapped. Dungeon Quest's board comes in six pieces, and you put the pieces together like a giant jigsaw puzzle. Here's the board more or less in its entirety. You can see that there's a giant play area, which you will actually build out as you explore the dungeon with your heroes. Dungeon Quest can be played with two to four players, or you can play it solo. Each player selects one of the four included heroes, and each hero has their own unique set of characteristics. Each hero is also represented by a detailed miniature to go with their card. There's Sir Rohan the Knight, Volric the Brave, Adventurer, Ulf Grimhand the Barbarian, and El Adoran Shurshot, the Ranger. Every hero has strength, agility, armor, and luck scores, as well as their own amount of life points. El Adoran Shurshot is a bit different in that he has an arrow track. He's able to fire some arrows off while he's in the dungeon. After selecting their heroes, players will place their characters in each of the four corner safe rooms of the dungeon. The objective is to enter Dragonfire Castle collect as much treasure as possible, and leave before the sun goes down. We'll follow the passage of time by placing the sun tracker token onto the sun tracker on the left side of the board. And with each turn that passes, this tracker will move one space closer and closer to the end of the day. When it lands on the skull, the day is over, and any heroes left in this dungeon will perish. On each turn, the heroes will decide which direction in the dungeon they would like to go. So, we'll take Sir Rohan and move him up one space. This means we have to draw a room tile. I've drawn a pretty straightforward tile, and it's a white arrow, which means it's a normal room tile. The exit to the right is blocked off by the wall of Dragonfire Castle, so it cannot be used. However, on my next turn, I'll be able to travel north or west. Since I've stepped onto the room tile, I have to draw a room card and I am immediately attacked by a mountain troll. The first thing that needs to happen is I need to decide whether I want to attack, wait and see, or flee. I've decided to wait and see. In a game with more than one player, another player other than the one who encountered the monster will pick up a monster card and look at the result. This is because if combat is initiated, another player who will be playing the monster against you will know how many life points they have, but you won't. This is handled a little bit differently in solo play. Since I chose wait and see, I now follow to see what the mountain troll does, and he flees. Now we don't have to fight. If we did, it would be a fight to the death. There would be no escaping until I had slain the troll, or he had slain me. The monsters don't all just automatically have their own life points. They actually get an amount of life points assigned to them when you draw one of the monster cards, and that life point tracker can be used here. The player who was playing the monster will move the tracker up, for every damage you inflict on your enemy, while your own life points will move down the tracker on your hero card every time you suffer damage. To facilitate fast collection of treasures, your goal may be to get to the very center of the board, where the actual treasure hoard guarded by the dragon itself awaits. Play now becomes really intense. Every round you wish to stay in the treasure chamber, you draw two random treasure tokens from the treasure bag, and these are going to be likely worth more than any of the other treasures in the dungeon. So if you can get treasures from the treasure hoard and then escape before nightfall, you can be declared the winner of the game if you have the most treasure. So the most likely way to win the game is to get to the center room, steal as much treasure as possible, and then leave before the sun sets. However, this is not without risk. Each time you search the treasure chamber, you will draw one of these dragon tiles. This is where the dragon is sleeping. And you draw a tile to determine whether he stays asleep after you've raided his hoard. There are seven chits here, 
and six of them portray the dragon sleeping. However, the seventh portrays the dragon waking up, upon which you will immediately take 1d12 of damage, potentially killing your character. That's it for this very basic introduction and unboxing. If you would like to see this game being played, I do plan on playing it very soon for the channel. But if you can't wait, you can go see Always Bored, Never Boring, who has a few of these solo gameplay videos up playing Dungeon Quest, one of which using the Catacombs expansion as well as the Heroes of Dungeon Quest expansion. I do plan on unboxing those expansions as well as the rest of the games in my Fast Now collection and introducing you to more of these vintage tabletop dungeon crawler games. So please stay tuned and if you haven't already, consider subscribing so that you don't miss out. That's all from me for now. So until to that's all from me for now. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, and I will see you tomorrow. Until then, bye for now.